The great oak trees that dominate the woodlands of the UK have become a national symbol for strength and endurance. Whilst Yorkshire's majestic oaks stand mighty on the local landscapes, they also hold great cultural significance, particularly in the village of Kilburn. It was here on the edge of the North York Moors that Robert Thompson began his career as a furniture maker in the early 20th century. Thompson's skills with oak earned him a notable reputation, whilst his signature hobbyist Kevin to meet Thompson's great-great-grandson, Simon Cartwright Thompson, at the Mouseman Visitor Centre to learn more about one of Yorkshire's famous sons. Oh, look at this. Wow. wow. Good morning. Well, this is where Robert Thompson's uh, story begins. Do you have any mouseman items yourself? I've got some, just two little mice. Yeah, well, those yeah. Uh, very earlier pieces are sort of quite highly collectible. There's a story behind the mouse as well, that's, that's, that's quite nice. nice. Yeah. Robert, um, he had a commission to repair a church roof. He was chatting amongst his apprentices. Uh, his apprentices were saying to him, oh, we're as poor as church mice. And while they were having their lunch, he decided to carve a mouse on, on one of the church beams. Oh, and <laughs> I think that sort of set the seed for using it as a trademark. The furniture designed and made by Mouseman was born out of the arts and crafts movement that began in 1880 and continued to have influence into the 1930s. Today, antique Mouseman pieces are highly collectible. OK, so we're into our workshop uh, and here we can see two chairs that uh, we're working on at the moment. This one is practically finished. Uh, and this one, we're about to start refurbing it. They're pretty similar, are they the same age? This one here is from the 30s, and this one, we believe, is from the 60s. But you can see on this, this mouse here, um, it's, uh, it's, very, it's very narrow on the neck, whereas on the 60s chair, they went to a slightly wider neck. We were finding the ears were getting knocked off, so uh, it was an advantage to have them slightly mm. uh, chubbier. So how would you go about restoring the, this chair? First off, I would chemically strip it, then I would neutralise it with a methylated spirit. It's actually the joints are loose on this, so it would go into the workshop, we'd knock it to bits, and then we'd re-pin it with uh, new dowels and modern glue. Upstairs, we've got uh, guys making uh, new pieces of furniture. So, I mean, would you like to go and have a look at those? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Like oh, well, follow me, and then we'll go upstairs. Thank you. The Mouseman philosophy today is still devoted to handcrafting simple, solid and functional oak pieces for the home, following the arts and crafts ethos that places value on high-grade handmade design rather than poorer quality mass production. Well, I'm working on a cheese board here. I've just adsed it, and you can see the undulations uh, in the top. If you just run your hand over that, you can actually feel it. And then once we've, uh, we've added the top, we'll use a cabinet scraper, which is this item here. And what we do, we go with the grain and we take out any steps and tears that may be in the timber. Would you like to have a go? Thank you. That's it. So can I just ask you about the mouse itself? Is it carved separately and then added afterwards? You can see a cheese board that I haven't started here. Um, there's a bit left on for the mouse. So that's where the mouse will get carved. OK, is that anything like? What? Yeah, I think you'd make a, a good apprentice. <laughs> Thank you. So af after we've scraped it, we're going to sand, uh, put sandpaper on. And again, we're going to rub with the grain. With the board almost complete, the edges are softened with a bevel-edged chisel before smoothing with a spoke shape to prevent splinters and then given a final sand. So with the possibility of a new hobby on the horizon for Kevin, it looks like he'll be needing that workshop even more.